Hi, my name is Jorge Reyes with Penguin Random House Audio, and welcome to a new episode of Meet the Voice. I'm delighted today to be sharing this space with my friend, the talented Almarie Guerra. Hey, Almarie. Hi. How I'm are so you? delighted to be here with you, Jorge. Absolutely. <laughs> we always have that dream job, right? Like that book. Maybe it's done already, but you're like, I would love to narrate that book. Which one yeah. is that? It is done already. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not not to like cut myself short, right? Like I ha still have ambition, right? But the moments that I've noticed that I'm super excited to step into the booth, always, but the moments that I'm like, oh, I can't wait. You know, when I wake up and I'm like, today's the day I get to narrate this book. It's usually a children's book. And it's usually a bilingual book because I feel like that's, that's where my um, my education, my life and upbringing have been leading me is to do bilingual work. And that's with everything, acting and, and, and also, you know, specifically audiobook narration. So whenever I get a chance to do a bilingual book, a Spanish and in English, I'm like, oh, this is great. I can't wait. And children's book, especially, I have three girls myself. Jorge, I know you have two boys. <laughs> yes. I love, I love when I get to do work that I can show them later, you know? Um, that's just, for me, that's the sweet spot. So recently this happened with you. This is hilarious. Cause you're asking me the question and I'm like, yes, something I've done with you actually is my dream job. Okay. <laughs> we just did, if you remember, um, Coqui, de aquí como el Coqui, which was mm -hmm. Coqui in the city in English. So there were two books, but it's the same book, just translated English to Spanish. By Nomar Perez, right? By Nomar Perez. Uh-huh. And, um, and I, I don't know if you remember this, but I brought two little stuffed cookies with me to the session. Let's Do you remember explain those? to the people what cookies. Okay, a cookie. They, is. they like, don't know what a cookie. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe everybody they listening is Puerto Rican. <laughs> so a cookie is. I have a tattoo of a cookie right here. What? what oh wow! Um, yeah, this was many many years ago. See, I tell you, it's my. It was my dream. A cookie is a tiny tree frog, essentially, that lives in is native to the island of Puerto Rico, which is where I'm from. Um, and at night, when, you know, the lights go out and everything, you can hear everybody, every Puerto Rican knows that when it's time to go to sleep, you're going to hear from outside, coquis, coqui, coqui, coqui. That's how they sound. And it's, it's all throughout the island. I think in Hawaii, they have them too, but I think they were smuggled over there. <laughs> And I don't know if the Hawaiians are so appreciative of it, but in Puerto <laughs> Rico, we love it. Like that to us is like a lullaby. It soothes us to sleep and it's very like, um, it's just a symbol of home. It's a, you know, it's a symbol of who we are and, and, and our land and everything. So the coqui has always been very special to me. And um, being a Puerto Rican who's outside of, of her motherland, right, I always carry the coqui with me and I even when my girls were born I would play them the sounds of coquis to sleep because I'm like they don't get to hear it at night but <laughs> here is YouTube <laughs> with a video <laughs> that has the sounds so when I got to narrate that book I was like this is this is it this is my dream book you know and so yeah so I I, I got to do my my dream book but you, you did a beautiful job in that book and uh, actually uh, I remember you uh, helping us getting that recording of a coqui because you know it's not easy to get if you're not from Puerto Rico. So <laughs> we did sound yeah. design in that and all that, and we actually put the original coqui sound design in, in in that book, and it it's beautiful. Cool. Did you get to use that the clips yeah, that I sent you? It's oh, there. <gasps> that's so it's special. There. <laughs> I wasn't sure, and yeah, my friends and my family recorded those from in Puerto Rico, and they were like, "Hey, sorry, it's raining, but here it is. Here's the sound." You know, they just put the. <laughs> So I'm so happy that, that that made it into the book. That's great. So let's go from, you know, the perfect loving moment in the studio where you narrated your, your you know, dream of a book to the more embarrassing moment in the booth. You oh know, it's just changed gears here. <laughs> okay. Uh, right? Um, Which one is that? My most embarrassing. Sadly, I'm not easily embarrassed. Like, you know, like <laughs> all this stuff that... <laughs> You know this. You've worked with me enough. Um, so it's like all these things that would normally embarrass new narrators, probably like burping and all these like, oh, that was an interesting sound. I don't care. I'm just like, I hope you're okay with that. Um, but yeah, okay. I can give you an embarrassing story. Falling asleep mid-sentence while recording <laughs> has definitely been my most embarrassing. And 
I still remember how it happened. Oh, oh. I've okay. So first of all, I've narrated quite a bit throughout pregnancies. So like I've had three pregnancies so far where I have, you know, shown up to work with my tired like self, but like turn it on. It's narration time. So I remember being in the booth once. I won't say what project I was working on, but I remember being in the booth and narrating and I don't know what the, you know, paragraph or whatever was, but it was something like, you know, I was describing something like, she looked over and the light from this and I just stopped. I just like stopped. And I think I fell asleep with my eyes open. So if you would have looked in the booth, I just looked like I was frozen. <laughs> but I was so tired. I was like trying to fake through the tiredness, but I was like, and she looked in the light. And my engineer was like, Are you are you okay? Yeah. And they were like, is is everything okay? And I was like, Yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Where was I? <laughs> can you can you tell me where I was? And they were like, "Are you sure? Do you need a break?" And I was like, "No, no. What? No." And of course, at that moment, I was super embarrassed. So I'm like, "I'm I'm wide awake again." But yeah, that was that was not that was not great. <laughs> Going back to to the the craft and the experience as a narrator, um, you know, you uh, uh, got some classes and coaching and all that. But I always think when you learn something from your experience, that mm -hmm. sticks with you like, you know, forever. When, what would that thing be like? You learn that from your own experience, like, ah, this is how I'm going to do it from now on, because this actually helped me uh, yeah. as an audiobook narrator. What would you say? Sure. I think this came... I would say the thing that has stuck with me the most that doesn't really change no matter what you're doing is to remember that you have a listener out there to remember that even though physically you're in a booth, like a, usually it's a very small space and it's soundproofed and you're thinking about all these technical things, right? When you narrate, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's really helpful to remember what the point of it all is. And that's so somebody can listen to somebody's story somebody can listen and it's not my story it's the author's story so you have to be the you know the custodian of that story and just go hey this author had all that i admire authors so much they're like oh my god i take my hat off to them I, they're my idols because i i'm i don't have that skill set where i could write sit down and write like a piece of art like that but you're you're taking that story that they birthed you know that they poured over that they you know, that they wrote and you're communicating it to a listening audience, not to your microphone, you know, not to the four walls surrounding you, you know, not to your padding of the booth so that no, no other sounds get in. You're saying it to the listener who's driving their car, who's doing the dishes, who's sitting there by the fireplace. One last question. And I don't know, let's just think how, you know, you're doing it. You are one of the best in the business. What's next for you? You know, what, what, what are your aspirations as an audiobook narrator? Uh, I don't know. What, what, what do you want to do more? Do you want to narrate more in Spanish or more? What's next for you? I did a panel recently with Penguin Random House about diversity and casting for audiobooks. And I believe I touched on this at the time there were other narrators in the panel who are wonderful, but I was coming into it from a Latina, from a Latinx uh, perspective. And I remember thinking what I really want for this business is some of what I've experienced for other people. So to bring in, to open up avenues, I'm not sure how that looks. And I'm sure we can, you, you and I Jorge, can talk about this later um, because I think we have similar goals to open up avenues to bring more narrators in so that we have authentic voices to represent some of this pretty amazing content that we've been getting from the authentic narr uh, authors themselves. I mean, there's stories coming out of each Latin American country. You know, there's Puerto Rican stories that I'm like, oh, let me do it because I know, I know those street names. I know that land. I know the flow of their dialogue, you know? So I want to narrate those and I want other Puerto Rican, I want to bring like other Puerto Rican narrators into this mix so that the listener 
can feel honored, you know, and the, the story can, can be honored by authenticity, right? If it's a Guatemalan book, I want it to be as much as we can make help, you know, as much as we can bring in a Guatemalan narrator so that they can carry it, you know, they can make it blossom. I just, that's my next goal is to find out ways. Cause I can't always be in the booth, right? I have three girls. I have a lot of work, you know, that I have to do. And it's not always going to be me in the booth. I can't tell all the stories. I really want to bring in more talent and encourage them, you know, and point them to the right training classes and, or just to the right way to practice this or to the right industry contact and, and just get more narrators in the mix that are from Latin countries and can hopefully bilingual as well and can do both Spanish and English. I love that. Well, Marie, I just want to thank you. This was a lovely conversation. Oh. Uh, and this was our uh, episode of Meet the Voice. And uh, thank you for being with us. Oh, you're so welcome. It was such an honor. And thank you, Jorge, for everything that you've always done. <laughs> and <laughs> you're such a wonderful friend and contact. And uh, this was a lovely conversation. <laughs>